friends would describe me, they would definitely say I have a lot of um, energy, um, uh, probably eternal optimism. I always uh, see the positive sides in life um, and um, also, yeah, definitely drive forwards to do something and change something. And um, probably over the last uh, few years, I've made quite a strong transition coming from somebody that was very business minded. Um, going to business school, also working like in a very for-profit oriented consulting company and then kind of making the transition to thinking like, wow, uh, there's a lot of injustice happening in the world and I need to do something about it. And I, I can't say that there was this specific aha moment, like I saw a poor person on the street or something like that. It wasn't that. Um, but I think it was a little bit that probably in my mid-twenties, um, I was sitting in New York, um, working for, for, for BCG. I learned a lot there. Um, I totally respect the people and the work that the company does. But at some point I was asking myself, what am I doing here? Like, why am I doing this? Why am I trying to optimize the shareholder value? Um, if I don't really totally believe in it, that stage, I really asked myself, is there any way that I could use my energy um, and my skills? Um, in a more useful way for society, and I started thinking about it. I'm telling you, I was lost with that one at the time. I asked LSE at that point in time, and um, I went to one of the talks that was offered at the university, and that was Professor Yunus speaking there. Um, he's Nobel laureate Mohammed Yunus. He, he's basically known because he developed the whole idea of microcredit. I knew about microfinance before, but he also spoke about social business, and he talked about how he had set up several joint ventures with large corporates that function as social businesses. So companies that have a social goal, but that work financially self-sustainably. In some ways, you can call it a new approach to philanthropy, uh, philanthropy or um, also if you come from the business side, a new way of business or a new way of capitalism. But in any case, it's a business that has a social goal and that works uh, financially self-sustainably. All profits get reinvested. So that's what he was talking about. And I thought, that's cool. Uh, that makes so much sense. At that point in time, I decided I had to get on board there. <laughs> and and um, so back in the day, I joined um, something that was an idea at that point in time. It was called Remy Creative Lab. Um, and um, with another German entrepreneur, Hans Weiz, um, I supported him to like, set up this idea and do a, self, a social business itself. So for me, it just seemed like an incredible opportunity. Um, but like there was a lot of unclearness at the beginning because I didn't really know um, what my role would be. It was clear that I would do several different things at the same time. And it was clear that there was no business plan behind it. <laughs> it was really like I said to myself, now I'm young, now I'm still independent. I can do all these things at this point. I don't have a family that I need to take care of. Um, I'll try it. And if after a year it doesn't work out, um, I'll do something else and I'll always find a job somewhere if that's what I need to do. But actually through that process I noticed like being entrepreneurial was really something that I loved and was a lot of fun and of course after that one year there was no way back for me and, and I had to stay in exactly that role and actually develop further there. So maybe there was a bit of courage at the beginning but uh, to be honest my heart grew me there right away. Nine months ago, um, we decided to um, split off one part of this company into a new entity, which is now Unos Social Business, which I now co-founded with Unos and two other partners. Um, and and this, this is now the new company that I'm heading up here, um, based in Frankfurt and in Haiti and in Albania. Um, reinvest all their profits into the business and have the goal to solve a particular social problem. And this is a concept um, that was created by um, East Nobel laureate Professor Mohammed Yunus. And he's also the co-founder of this company. Um, and what we do concretely is uh, we set up social business incubator funds. So small venture capital for social business, uh, where again all profits get reinvested. Um, and we also do advisory services for big corporates, governments, NGOs, etc to help them set up social businesses. I wouldn't call myself a disruptive person because as you've seen, like my, um, my change has been somewhat gradual in my personal life. Um, but I do think that the work that we do is somewhat disruptive because basically what we're doing is we're saying, this is the normal capitalist model. 
and we're basically turning it on the head. What we do is we take the strength of capitalism, which are the market orientation, the fact that it's financially self-sustainable and therefore has this inbuilt um, efficiency. It takes that strength and that power, but actually uses it for society. Let's put it that way. Um, and it does that in a very simple way. It, it, it's, it takes the profit motivation um, away from the shareholder and, and it therefore makes um, the shareholder focus fully on solving a social problem. So it maximizes the social impact um, rather than the, let's say, financial return, which would be the typical thing that a business would be steered by. And so in a social business, um, the profit is a constraint rather than an end in itself. The end in a social business is solving the particular problem. And that, I think, is something fundamental because it takes, it, it uses capitalism and it distills it to like the essential parts of it, which are its strengths, um, but it turns it around and, and, and focuses on society, which possibly is what capitalism originally was focused on as well, um, uh, serving society's needs. Um, but it has been, let's say, the evolution of capitalism you, you could argue it has in some um, areas not been always positive. Um, and I'm not saying that capitalism is not the model. I'm just saying we can add another option um, to capitalism, which is next to the normal business, we can also add social business as another option for people that are entrepreneurs. So everyone knows Dan and Brit yogurts and that it produces and water and so on and so on. And um, basically what we did is to set up um, a social business joint venture with them in Bangladesh. This is a separate company that's owned partly by Grameen, partly by Dan. Um, it sells um, yogurts that are enriched with vitamins and micronutrients. And there's a problem with malnutrition, especially um, for kids until the age of five. Um, and if they eat this yogurt, um, this problem gets more and more reduced. And um, so basically this social business sells these yogurts to those poor kids um, in rural Bangladesh, um, but of course works again financially self-sustainably and profits get reinvested. Uh, so at the end of the year, um, the manager of that particular company measures his success in how many cups of yogurts have I sold, um, and also, of course, eventually, like how many people have left malnutrition. Um, a, a similar joint venture with um, a French company, which is a utilities company called Violia, and with them, uh, Grameen has set up a joint venture as well. Um, they sell Bangladesh has the problem of. Um, arsenic that's in the groundwater and um, Veolia uh, and takes surface water, cleans it and people can drink this clean surface water um, rather than having arsenic uh, um, getting uh, contaminated by arsenic and uh, um, getting cancer etc which happens when you have when you have too much arsenic over time and if you drink the groundwater people get diarrhea and they cannot keep the water so Clean surface water is what Veolia offers, so that's another example. But um, social business also works in, um, in the developed world context. Um, so you can imagine just a simple, any old business could be run as a social business. Let's say it's a pizzeria. A pizzeria could be run um, as a for-profit business, meaning like I, the owner, um, want to extract as much profits as I can. Or a social business saying, I want to ensure that all these like unemployed kids from uh, the neighborhoods have a job. And that's what I'm focusing on. So at the end of the year, if I make profits, instead of like giving it to my shareholders, I invest in putting it into another uh, a job for this particular person. So these are just some examples of what social businesses can be in. It's basically, it, it works in any, any field you can imagine. Just try something out, um, because in some ways I also I came from a very secure and safe job position and like with a good income and so on and so on, um, and I also went into something that was as you said just an idea, um, and I loved it. I had an incredible experience, um, and I think it was enriching, extremely enriching for me in my life, and I would definitely not want to do a different thing uh, from what I'm doing right now. So that's. Definitely just try something out. You might fail, but there's always a way to like 
move on and you'll learn from something from that. Um, another thing is um, try being an entrepreneur yourself um, because it is, like I never thought I was an entrepreneur. I thought, uh, yeah, I could be a good manager, but I, I, I didn't feel that I had any entrepreneurial um, yeah, strengths. But I really noticed once you actually get your hands dirty and start something new, uh, you notice how creative it can be and how much fun it can be, how nice it is to actually create something rather than to just do what somebody else says um, says is the right thing to do. So become an entrepreneur and ideally a social business entrepreneur. <laughs> what I have personally learned is um, probably question uh, um, existing knowledge or existing preconceived notions. Um, because again, when I went to business school, everyone was telling me about shareholder value maximization and about how capitalism is the only model that's out there and that this was the way and profit and that was what the world was about. And I kind of believed it back then. Um, and only over time through, of course, the financial crisis, through visiting many, many poor countries around the world, um, India, Bangladesh, Ghana, Colombia, Haiti, etc., Albania, countries that we work in, um, that has helped me to see that somehow the model that we have right now doesn't fully uh, seem to be the right one. And so I've really discovered this concept of social business as something that can ex be extremely helpful because it's very close to the world that we already know. Um, at the same time, it's it's radically different, um, uh, but it can therefore make a big change. Um, and it's financially self-sustainable. It's not based on um, the pity of some donors. Um, so you can do it yourself. Um, and fourth, it's, it's something you can start very small. So you can do it or you can do it like anyone that's listening can ever do it. You just need, I don't know, a thousand euro startup capital and you can start your little business, your little social business. And it might work, it might not work. Um, but at least it's something you can change. It's not like, oh, I, I'm going to need uh, the UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon to decide on this or the G20 have to decide on this. It's something that you as a person can do individually. I think it will help if everyone looks at their neighbor um, or um, tries to find out um, a little bit more about the problems that other people have. And I'm not even saying I'm doing that every day, for sure not. Um, but I think looking at trying to help solve some of the problems that other people have, A, around you, um, and be, of course, like slightly more further out, let, let's say, in developing nations. I think there have been several waves over the last few years, especially in Western culture, and one of them has been the focus on individualism, the focus on focusing everything on you, giving you as a person the absolute freedom to do everything. You should have it. It's for you. Like this whole movement around the iPhone and the iPad and the i and so on, like all these i-focused things. Um, I think that's something that we should once in a while question and see, um, ask ourselves if it's really only all about the I or if there's also a little bit something about people around you. And I don't only mean friends and family, I actually mean people maybe a little bit further out. Yeah, it's important also to look at the neighbor, but I also mean people further out. Um, and I think that despite the fact that um, more than half um, of the people in the world um, live on less than one dollar a day and um, probably two-thirds uh, live, live below two dollars or three dollars a day and um, many people in the western let's say developed world often don't really look at that um, and they forget it because it's like not apparent in their daily life. Think about those people as well um, and um, maybe there's something that every single person can do. And again, like everyone has to decide for themselves how they want to get involved and, and what they want to do. Um, but um, I think paying tax monies or giving a few donations here and there probably is not enough anymore. Um, and um, maybe creating an own initiative, whatever that might be, maybe as a social business, might be um, might be a way of, of, of um, yeah, trying to make this move into a better world. <laughs>